Three Fourth Week just dropped a ton of information that's coming in with Season 4. We're talking cross-core customization, infection, career rank, maps, and bonus XP weekend, and a whole lot more. So make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. 343 just hosted a Discord call, much like they did the other week, talking about what the future plans are for Halo Infinite. And just like last week, they provided a lot of great information. So I timestamped everything down in the description, guys, if you guys want to check out exactly what you're looking for. But I got a lot of extra stuff besides just what I just intro. So first of all, they talked about their priorities when it comes to the live service being the consistency, satisfaction, and quality. And so far, 343 has stated that they are happy right now with the consistency of seasonality and updates when it comes to Halo Infinite, and they feel really good about the current state of Season 4 coming in at the end of June. They're happy with the progress of satisfaction for players, talking about things like match XP, battle passes, customization, and more, and also specifically mentioned some really good customization coming with Season 5, but they didn't say in particular, but it was kind of a bit of a wink and a nod. One aspect 343 acknowledged that they are not currently living up to what they want to be at is at the quality. They mentioned how frustrating this is for them and also for the community as a whole. Sean Barron, who is the head of the live service team, said he wouldn't even give them a passing grade when it comes to where they're at right now. Talking about things like rubber banding, shot around corners, stability, desync, and the number one highest issue that they are currently working on right now is the settings being reset issue. They are actively fixing this right now. They added some telemetry into Halo Infinite to find the source of the issue. And they say that they have speculative fixes in the works at the moment, but nothing verified as this is such a random issue. Personally, I have not experienced the settings reset issue, but I see you guys in the comments and I see a lot of people on Twitter are all really experiencing this a lot. To touch back on rubber banding, shot around cores and stability and things like that, 343 talked about possibly doing a more dramatic changes when it comes to their networking when it comes to Halo Infinite. They specifically specifically mentioned that at the moment they've been kind of chipping away at things, trying out little changes here and there to see if it fixes up with the networking of Halo Infinite and it has some improvements but not a whole lot. Sketch specifically mentions about making more drastic changes to the networking of Halo Infinite which could be a little bit longer in the time frame when it comes to seeing these updates but there will be more drastic sweeping changes rather than just little tweaks here and there. And stated that Season 4 won't magically fix the networking issues or still be some problems there. But 343 might be looking into completely reworking the networking of Halo Infinite to truly fix any of the issues people are having. Now, some of you might have noticed, myself included, that 343 has been a bit more quiet recently, especially ever since the release of Bonnie Ross from 343 or her stepping down. And saying that this is much a bit of a focus from Pierre Hintz talking about how they want to deliver on things that are spoken to the Halo community. Uh, they brought it, for example, when they mentioned cross core customers customization, right? When that was first addressed before the release of season two, and they haven't really had much to talk about, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video, guys. And 343 kind of promised this cross core customization far too early in events, and they haven't really mentioned anything about it because they haven't really had anything to report on until now, which I would say is the right move. I do actually feel like 343 is a little too forthcoming when it comes to their development and progress when it comes to the development of Halo Infinite. I think they need to be a little bit more reserved and when they actually talk about topics with the community, it's something that they can actually deliver on and if it's something they can't deliver on in a foreseeable future to say progress is being made, but not anytime soon. Now let's get into the customization. So they had three pillars that they wanted to talk about when it comes to providing things for the players. One is depth, be able to create content that can be released that will actually expand on what is already there at the moment. For example, the UI armor set has very little customization, most likely the reason why for the leaks and rumors have been suggesting we'll get 10 right 2 for season four to provide more depth to that armor set and various other sets as well. They also talked about breadth, about exploring Spartan fantasies, what cores are supposed to do and be able to deliver experiences within cores that can be one, a little bit extra, like say the cat ears, but also a little bit of the military styles that people really like for that sci-fi military feel. So we might see some more wacky customization available for your lore accurate cores if that's the way to put it but also provide more military sci-fi styles for people who want to go with that route and the third pillar they mentioned is value which is incredibly important because they specifically mentioned that the money that they make through the battle passes and customization is what funds halo infinite it's what's keeping the light on it helps keep the development going for things like modes maps and literally everything else that's happening with halo infinite it's all funded through the store now this is not me saying that you have to go out and buy something from the store 
to help support 343, they should only get your money when they actually deserve it. But it was an interesting bit of context to kind of show where 343 is getting the revenue from to help support Halo Infinite and develop for the game to one, fix networking, create new maps and experiences. And that's mainly funded through the store. So 343 mentioned that they want to provide more value when it comes to the customization that is offered through the shops and battle passes. And one way to provide more value is by having cross-core customization coming in with season four. And that cross-core being cross-core codings. 343 specifically mentioned all new shop and battle pass codings will be cross-core. They did state that the previous codings that are already in Halo Infinite, that they want to make those cross-core, it just might be a little bit of extra work as they probably coded or set up in a different way. That was a little too technical for their getting into, but basically they were just saying it takes a lot of time and effort to make these cross core codings happen. And that making past codings cross core said that there aren't any vetted plans at the moment, but they are looking into multiple solutions to bring that to reality, which I think we all can agree that, man, we do wish we could have just any coding from pre-season four be available for cross-core, myself included, there are some codings already in the game that do that. And I'm sure 343 wanted to have the previous codings available for cross-core as well, but it might just be the way things are at the moment and the back end of things for Halo Infinite is just to do it right here and now, season four and later for the all the new content will be cross-core codings. Now for the next question you're asking is, what about the armor? You gave us the codings, but what about the armor? Then 343 say that they can't commit to anything at the moment when it comes to cross-core armor, but things are being put into motion. They're been in the investigation stage. Sean Barron specifically mentioned about like a 60% solution is currently at the moment when it comes to the progress, as in they have some pretty good ideas of what they want to do when it comes to cross-core armor sets, but that is certainly a subject to change and nothing set in stone at the moment. This could have been a wink and a nod like they mentioned earlier about seeing that the customization for season five looks really good and hopefully we get cross core armor sets when it comes to season five again that's pure speculation but as soon as we get some concrete information about cross core armor coming in the halo infinite you know i'll let you guys know while in the chat sketch the community director actually t discussed about playable elites and assassinations for playable elites sketch said i'll just give it to you straight playable elites are not in active development we know it's something that some players are super passionate about, but we have a lot of things to go after, and this isn't a priority today. When asked about assassinations, Sketch also said, currently assassinations are not in active development. So if you're holding out hopes for playable leads or assassinations coming in this year or anytime soon when it comes to Halo Infinite, I would not hold your breath. If anything, I'd probably just give up hope of those coming into the game until I hear otherwise. But a bit of content that was promised to come into season three, and we haven't seen it yet, but now has been confirmed to ship early season four is the map plaza that we talked about earlier here on the channel. Recently, some images leaked out about the map. Some people have their own opinions. I think it looks great, but it's great to know that plaza is actually coming in early season four. They don't have a specific date yet, but they definitely mentioned it's the early half of season four. Career rank was mentioned as it is coming with the launch of season four and using military ranks. Now I covered career ranks earlier on this channel when they were leaked and rumored, but these are basically images that are grabbed from the API and then people release them. While the rankings do look nice, they don't look crazy exciting. I'm glad they're using military ranks and a bit of a symbolism when it comes to ranks rather than Halo 5s, which was just a number. They even kind of roasted within the call. They also did state they're looking to do a deep dive coming soon when it comes to the career ranks. We'll know more about that before the release of season four. And talking about the release of season four, we also have Infection has been confirmed at launch for season four. Again, we'll have another deep dive into Infection and see if 343 has decided to make any changes when it comes to that. Currently what we've seen at the moment when it comes to leaks and rumors and leaked out images, that looks to be kind of like an AI infection from Eratus on Spartan's armor. So it's nothing like the flood or anything like that. It's much more a digital infection, if you will. And we saw this with the end of the narrative event when it comes to season three. Now there will be a chance to play season four content before the release of season four. And that's at DreamHack Dallas. We'll be able to have some content. We've seen this previously with like season two and three with previous events. But they mentioned with that same weekend of June, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th left bonus XP weekends. They specifically mentioned it's not double XP, but bonus XP. This is designed to help you progress through the battle pass before the end of Season 3, so when Season 4 rolls around, you're ready to just jump in and start grinding out the new content. Many other live service games, most notably from my experience, Call of Duty does this a lot when it comes to the last
last couple of weeks of a season. They'll do a little double XP or give you some bonus experience when it comes to progression. So then you can grind out that content, kind of get to bump up those numbers a bit towards the end of the season. So then when the next season comes around, you get people already hooked and started playing. 343 also briefly touched on events when it comes to Halo Infinite, and they didn't have anything specific to share right now, but it definitely mentioned changes coming specifically within season five when it comes to events, but that's all they really had to mention about it. But one thing they were able to provide specifics on were a roadmap. A lot of people were asking about it, saying, what's the future of Halo Infinite looking like at least this year? And 343 stated that they are thinking more short term when it comes to Halo Infinite. I mean, I think this kind of makes sense as development, again, can ebb and flow when it comes to things being released on schedule. We've clearly seen this when it comes to the development of Halo Infinite for the previous roadmaps provided by, C by 343. And this also kind of ties into what we talked about earlier with PR Hints talking about saying like, if you're going to promise something to the community, make sure that it's something that is tangible there that we can say that progress has been made and things like that. And I totally agree with this as well when it comes to communication with the community saying like a roadmap is nice, but I don't think it's super needed. I think the one thing is just that we want to know what the long term overarching steps are for Halo Infinite, right? Like, are we getting a PVE mode? Is that in the works? We've only seen leaks and rumors for months now about extraction, which I've talked about previously on the channel here. Now we've seen new leaks about a mode called Bastion, which is kind of like a King of the Hill PVE mode that's been leaked and rumored. Though if Halo Infinite is going to be at the Xbox Bethesda showcase coming here in June, I'm sure that's probably where they're saving a lot of their big announcements. It certainly wouldn't happen over a Discord call like this. There was a lot to unpack with all this information, guys. So if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. I can maybe make this into a Q&A series where I reply to your guys' comments and provide more details about all this information that was just dropped. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to tap that like button. It is the best way to help out the channel within the all-famous YouTube algorithm, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.